Hey everybody, Nick here, and today I got a disassembly and maintenance video for you on this little guy. This is the um, Chris Reeve Knives Sebenza 20, I'm sorry, this is the Lodge and Cozy. I've previously reviewed and disassembled the Sebenza 25, but I figured in order to really talk about what differentiates the two of them, I should talk about the, uh, the I should show you guys what's inside and uh, do the disassembly here. Um, one thing to note is that I've done this a couple of times already, actually, because I really carried this knife probably a lot more than I'm used to for a review, and that's actually felt pretty good. I'm hoping to do that a little bit more often in the future here. But um, look, this guy, uh, yeah, let's go ahead and take this apart um, before I go too deep into it and start spoiling the review because I don't want to do that. Although actually, practically speaking, this review is going to be maybe a little bit less... Um, I don't know. Uh, it's going to be a little quicker than usual because I'm mostly going to be comparing it to my previous review of the 25. Now, one thing to note is that I am using the tools here that come with Chris that that that, that Chris Reeve knives sent with the uh, with the knife here. So uh, that way you're using the same things I will, and I really appreciate the fact that they do. Um, when you buy this guy, they 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 include those tools. And by the way, this was not sent to me from Chris Reeve. They they just send these with freaking everybody. Um, and so there you go. But I've remove the pivot, which is free spinning, which is ugly, let's be real here, um, and then I'll go ahead and I'll pop this back screw on out of here, and we'll, uh, we'll, we'll take it from there. One other thing to note is this guy comes with a lanyard, um, in the back here, uh, which is, is fine, uh, the lanyard is looped around here generally, but, um, I don't like lanyards, so I took it off of there. Luckily, you can just kind of pull it off there and no problem. This guy actually, on the very first go, and it looks like on this go as well, um, it takes a little bit of oomph to get off of there. Um, basically, what you're going to want to do is wiggle the, 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 the top scale a little bit here and occasionally release the lock bar tension a little bit. The goal here is just kind of getting this scale to lift off of both the shouldered backspacer here as well as the um, the, the stop pin here, etc. So we'll go ahead and pop all of this loose here. We're getting very close. I'm feeling it coming just around the bend. All righty, come on now. Oh, damn it, I just popped the back part on here. You can use like a spudger or uh, some sort of a plastic non-marring pry tool if you'd like. For me, I'm, I'm happy. And actually, at the moment, I'm, I'm chewing up my mat a little bit. That's cool. But uh, for me, I'm happy to just sort of manipulate a little bit here um, and see what I can do. Come on, you're so close. I see, I, I feel, I, I, I know it's coming, but here we go. Anyways, moving along back and forth, this is actually a historic video too. Um, not because it occurred in the 1812 or whatever, but just because um, this is probably going to be the very last um, disassembly and maintenance video I film in the state of Michigan. Um, it's getting to the point now where I, I'm approximating my move, and so I really, really need to uh, pack everything up here. And uh, all my disassembly tools are definitely among that. So, uh, yeah, that's that's going to be happening here shortly. Oh, I'm so freaking close, guys. Come on. There we go. There we are, freaking finally. Um, again, probably could have done that faster, but um, hashtag not a brilliant man here. So what we see inside here are actually some substantial differences off of the uh, the, the, the original uh, Sebenza 25. Original Sebenza 25, that's kind of a weird way to put things. Um, one of the big ones is the stop pin here. In the 25 originally, it had a, um, a flat bottom stop pin here, which make the rockin' world go round, but alas is not uh, what I'm looking for here. Um, and that made, as a result, you had to worry about the rotation of the stop and you had to remove the stop pin each time etc whereas this guy just has this sort of post like stop pin that that fits into here with very tight tolerances and can just stay in position so you, this really is a two screw knife which I do appreciate I think that's a really nice detail and uh, that, that it's an improvement you still have the very large pivot you still have the adjustable pivot and note there is still no uh, pivot bushing um, as you would see in for instance the Sebenza 21 um, which uh, you know some would call a demerit of this knife it's certainly it's what makes this guy meaningfully different from the Sebenza uh, lineup at this point in time. Any of the uh, the Incoses, that is the large or the small, are going to have that uh, this kind of a pivot system here where it's uh, just a pivot uh, and there's no like bushing around it, which means that you're kind of choosing your own adventure when it comes to action, which can be good or bad or ugly, but it's it's definitely a difference there. And I'm just kind of washing off the, uh, the, the inside here. Practically speaking, Chris Reeve includes with every knife a thing of Loctite here, um, which is uh, good for keeping the, the pivot screw in place as well as this Chris Reeve grease. 
Um, it's a fluorinated grease sort of thing. Finish line does something else. Um, practically speaking, it, it's fine. It tends to dry out a little bit um, over time, and it tends to make the knife run very, very slow, which is not something I'm, uh, I'm as much of a fan of. And so I don't actually, I'm not planning to use that. I also don't want to necessarily open it up because uh, this guy's probably going to be going down the road to a patron, and I'd like them to have something relatively close to new in box. Um, in terms of, you know, packaging and such. But anyways, um, so there's that. Um, you'll also see that this has uh, washes that are very, very large. That's one thing I respect very much. Not only is this using phosphor bronze washes, but it's using huge ones. And what that means is that the knife has a great deal of wide lateral support. Um, and it's also using, you can see here that the washes themselves have sort of a, a groove to go around the stop pin here. And what that means is that they don't have to have like that tab, as you saw in the Sebenza 25, uh, that's that's kind of a big distinction. Well, okay, it's not a big distinction, but it's something that makes this knife less fiddly. I um, mean, that was kind of my biggest issue with the Sebenza 25, is that it took something that is a profoundly boring knife, and I mean that in the very best of ways, uh, the, this, the 21, and then it added a bunch of things to it, <laughs> a bunch of sh things, shall we say, uh, like shabazz. Um, uh, but anyways, a bunch of sh things to it that uh, made it a lot more fiddly, a lot more complicated, and a lot less, frankly, pleasant. And so the fact that they've gotten rid of some of those sh things, are, um, that, that, that brings me some joy here. I, I think it, the knife is better as a result. One thing that I'll note as well as I'm, I'm sitting here talking and cleaning is that I have gone ahead and removed the, um, previously with this knife, what I did is I, I, I tighten the pivot down a fair amount, not like, oh my god, you're, danger you're damaging anything, but just kind of crank the pivot down a little further than I'd like it to for everyday use, and then I just work the action over and over again, just sitting there watching a, a TV show, The Americans, actually, about a uh, Soviet sleeper cell in the U.S., actually quite a good show, I'll say that, and sorry about the AC kicking on, but guys, it's freaking hot in Michigan. Um, anyways, uh, so I, and I just kind of worked the action back and forth, back and forth, and what that allowed me to do is sort of wear in some of the washer. You can see here, there are little streaks and there are little polished areas, that's where the washer is contacting the blade. Um, and so, um, doing so and kind of wearing it in in that slightly tighter state uh, really allows for uh, the, the next cleanup gets out a lot of kind of gunk in there and leaves the knife uh, frankly a little bit smoother than it usually would be otherwise. I mean you'll do the same exact thing just by over and over and over again using it over the course of your daily life. I mean and obviously nothing's going to approximate this guy living in your pocket for 10-15 years. Um, that'll make it way way smoother than anything but it's definitely um, that's one approach to kind of smoothing things out if you're trying to help the process along. And in my case I kind of am because I want to be able to make a verdict on this guy in the matter of you know a full week of carry rather than a a full month or a full year or a full 20 years. So um, that, those are the kinds of things I've done to it. The other thing that you'll see that I'm going to do here that is going to be controversial, I'm going to be getting jeers and hate from the, the, the Chris Reed forums on Blade Forms. They hate me already. It's kind of cool. Um, but anyways, um, I think they just dislike the way that I disassemble the uh, the Sebenzas and whatnot. But anyways, the um, thing I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to run it on a thick oil rather than on a grease. So if you want a really hydraulic kind of I uh, how do I even describe it? Like a syrupy motion um, out of your, your knife. You do not want to run it on an oil. You want to use something like the Chris Reeve grease, uh, your uh, the lithium grease, fluorinated, your nano grease, whatever. You want to use something like that. But the thing is, I look at one of the benefits of this knife as being that it is a much more... Um, you can really tune the action a little bit more to your liking. And one of the ways that I'm going to do that is instead of using a grease, I'm going to put this guy back together with a, a bit of an 85 weight nano oil. So um, nano oil is a product that's fine. It's a, but I like the fact that you have a, um, a higher viscosity option here. Um, and that allows you to get something that is not quite so thin as like a 10 weight oil or a Dewa real oil or something like that, but also a little bit, um, but not as thick and not as slow as an actual grease sort of an affair. So yeah, there's that. Um, next thing, we're going to go ahead and put the uh, washes back onto here because we're, we're now cleaned out. We'll go ahead and start the reassembly. So I'll just drop the washer on here, making sure that it's properly indexed and also making sure that the shiny side, see the shiny side where it's kind of worn in, is facing up against the knife. I don't these washers look like they may actually be symmetrical, um, but it's a good idea to keep the worn side against the knife because then you're getting the smoothness of the wear. That's another thing I love about this kind of approach to knife making with the phosphor bronze washes. It's really going to make for a very durable, long-term-y sort of action. 
um, that'll get better over time rather than worse, as is the case with Teflon, or in some cases, bad bearings. Um, I, actually, that I shouldn't say that. It would, the bearing would have to be like outright defective, like it would have to be, you know, divoting into the metal for the action to get worse over time, unless it's, you know, in need of a cleanup or something like that. But still, there's a lot to be said for just good old-fashioned phosphor bronze. So I'm using a, actually a fair amount of nano oil there to give kind of a grease pattern. Um, a couple of other things to highlight. This has a ceramic detent ball, um, which is also the locked bar interface here. You can see there's just a little line here where the ceramic uh, comes onto the lock bar, uh, the, the, the blade tang there. Um, that's fine. A lot of people talk about it like, oh my god, that's great, that's terrible, whatever. I honestly don't feel either way. The detent on this knife is pretty strong, certainly. Um, and I'm just adding a little bit of oil here to um, serve as, uh, to lubricate the lock bar. Uh, moving across the blade there. But honestly, I just see it as fine. It's a, it's a choice that they made. It's not like an, oh my God, yes, choice, but it's also not an, oh my God, no choice. It's fine. And so, um, yeah, there you go. And overall, I just, the fact that this no longer, I don't need to worry about this being properly rotated is great. The fact that this is just, they've done, I really do, it's kind of surprising, given that they are very similar in a lot of ways, um, I, I'm impressed with how much more I like the the, the, the Nkosi, the Lodge Nkosi here. I think they made a bunch of really necessary changes that are small, but sort of the sum of those changes adds up to really, I think, improving the knife. So I'm just using this, um, using the blade itself and knowing full well that that wash is going to, you know, dislodge slightly to just distribute the oil underneath there. Um, but you can see here that it's also got those oil pockets in the washers, which will help everything be okay. Um, and now let's go ahead and reseat the, the, the scale here. Um, so that's a lot easier than unreseating it. Make sure I've got both my washers in, everything's rotated into position. Unlike the Sebenza 21, you can very easily do it in this sort of sandwich approach. Uh, where you put the, you know, the blade on, then put the scales in there. Um, it, it works fine in this case. Um, the 21, it's easier to pinch a washer that way. It's a little scary. Um, so, yeah, there's that. Next thing I'm going to do is use a little bit of Loctite here. Now, um, they include the purple stuff. I don't want to open that Loctite packet before I uh, ship this guy off to a, uh, likely a patron or something. So what I'm going to do instead is use a little bit of, bit of my uh, blue stuff here. It works great. No freaking problem there. And I'm just going to rotate this into position. After a certain point, it's going to start spinning on the other side here. But um, it's just easier not to start off rotating two tools. Get everything sort of in position. And then I'll tune the actual action in just a second here, as you'll, you'll see. Then I'm going to go ahead and drop this guy in as well. Um, chances are I don't actually need the Loctite in the back at all. Um, it's, you know, Chris Reeve knives, at least historically. And by the way, this guy, speaking of history, this is a relatively new one. This was made, uh, you know, right now, this is July of 2018. This particular knife, um, as in the one that's sitting right in front of me of many lodging cosies, this one is mine, um, is uh, City, this one was made in June of 2018. And so uh, this you can consider to be a, a good representation of what Chris Reeve has been putting out lately. There have been a lot of questions there. Um, I think they may have had a time of brief troubles, although I don't think they'll ever admit it. And maybe it was not a thing. Um, but either way, um, I had a thing. And so we'll see. Uh, but th this one seems great, actually. I mean, out of the box, I'm a guy who's really good at complaining about fit and finish issues. And out of the box, I got nothing to complain about here. So that's good. Uh, this is a little tight here. Come on. Pop it loose, bro. There we go. Alrighty. So now at this point in time, we have the knife sort of reassembled. Um, but what we... Uh, Actually, okay, right now the pivot is perfectly snug and very, very smooth. This knife is exceptionally smooth. Now that I've cleaned out a little bit of the gunk and grime that uh, comes from just using the knife, carrying the knife, and also wearing the knife in, doing a lot of opens and closes, this guy is very, very smooth. And right now it's in a nice intermediate sort of state where it's very easy to open and close. It's very, very glassy, um, but it's not like there's not too much resistance. Um, and you can actually do things like flick this guy out. I know I voided the warranty. No, it's a joke. Um, well, it is, even if it isn't. Um, but no, um, look, this is, uh, there, there have been many jokes about how, you know, you're not supposed to flick your Sebenza because reasons. Um, but this one flicks just fine, and that's one of the things that the 25 has um, sort of going for it. I can also loosen the pivot a little bit here, and that will, um, if we get to a point where there's no blade play, no play here, and this is... 
that actually makes it just a little flickier, a little bit, you know, it's not quite going to drop shut, um, and particularly with this oil, which is still a little on the thicker side, um, but it still gives you that option there. And because you're using Loctite, you can really maintain whatever pivot tightness you'd like. Okay, here I've got the slightest bit of blade place. That's about as kind of uh, loose as I'd like to make it. Tighten it up just a tiny freaking hint here. Yeah, no play. Very smooth. Dead centered, as you would hope for this kind of price point. Um, But yeah, so that's... Hey, sorry about that. The, uh, the, the, the wife called. And when the wife calls, you answer the phone. I like her. It's okay. I mean, actually, more importantly, when the phone starts ringing, the, uh, the, the display goes out. But anyways, what I was doing there is uh, showing you that um, you can really adjust the pivot there. And actually, what I've done, what I did while I was trying to figure out what the heck was happening is I really cranked that pivot down here. This is good, like I said, for wearing in the knife, but it also may be a helpful thing for somebody who really doesn't want the, 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 the knife to move, the, the flick or whatever. That's a little too much even by my by those kinds of standards. So I'm going to back it down a little bit, but what this results in is a, a an action that is much, much slower. Like in this case, it is never freaking closing without a fair amount of effort. I'm not necessarily a big fan of this, and if you're running it like this, you absolutely should be running it on grease because uh, it'll just work a little bit better. But um, yeah, at another real level, though, you see this uh, this works just fine. So, um, but I like I said, my temptation with a knife like this and sort of what makes it more interesting when it's run tight, it feels more like the Sebenza 21. But what makes this knife more unique to me is running it a little bit on the looser side so that you really can enjoy the, uh, the the fact that this guy... I can loosen that up a little bit further. You can enjoy the fact that this guy is... Um, a little bit flickier, a little bit sort of more conventional uh, in terms of its action relative to a lot of your other frame locks. Uh, maybe I can go this a little bit, ch uh, not cheaper, well, do this a little cheaper too. Uh, but uh, there we go. There we go. Yeah, there we go. No play, and it flicks open readily. Yeah, sometimes you need to give it a little love, especially if I'm trying to do this under a computer. If you're going to flick this guy, you need some wrist. But at the very least, it's also very easy to pop out using the stud itself. And uh, the knife is now disassembled and in beautiful shape, running absolutely smoothly. There's a lot to like here. So anyways, um, there you go. Sorry about the interruption. Hope this has been interesting to you, and have yourselves just an absolutely wonderful uh, rest of your day. Bye now.